Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to easily create lettuces in Fusion 360. Let's jump right in. All right, so here we are in Fusion and I already prepared this test body. Uh, it's basically made from two extrusions, this bottom part and uh, the top part here. And this is going to be a heat sink and we're going to use a lattice structure to generate a heat dissipating uh, surface. So this is just the mounting base and this block up here will be the mesh. So first of all, you've got to check your extensions and you've got to get the product design extension because the volumetric meshes are a part of that. So you've got to get that. And once you've got that, you will have here in this uh, drop down menu, volumetric meshes as an option. So just select that and you select anybody that you want to you know, generate a mesh out of. As you see, that's super quick. And so let's go through the menu here real quick. So first of all, uh, here you can select the, the body, which we just did, and then you can select the cell shape. And I really like the recent update because it added the X cell. Um, before that, I had to use the general cross cell and rotate it to make it feasible for additive and well, the excel is just way better for printing or also a gyroid uh, cell which also always looks nice then you come over to the density which is i guess fairly self-explanatory uh was well, something like this and then you have the offset tab and this is the actually one of the most important ones because well just this uh, mesh body will not do us any good. We need solid parts to anchor it down to our assembly point. And so now you can select basically any edges, surfaces, um, whatever you need. And we're going to select the bottom surface. It's not very well highlighted. So you gotta, what you can do, you can turn off the uh, volumetric mesh body here. And it doesn't show that you can select the bottom surface and turn the visibility back on. And now you can see we have a solid region down here. And I know that this particular part is three millimeters thick. So um, here you have the thickness of this uh, region and the density. You could pull that down to have a sort of you know, second region, uh, if you like. And you have this um, uh, sort of overlapping region, which is 0.8 millimeters here. We can probably bring that down to maybe 0.2. And this will basically, you know, sort of blend from the solid to the uh, sparse uh, body. We'll leave the uh, density as it is. It looks quite nice. And uh, as you can already see here, in my case, some of the beams, you know, end up being on the edge and would be then printed in mid-air or mid-powder, so to say. So typically you have to adjust your cell size to sort of fit your mesh in there. And you can do that uniformly or non-uniformly. And I found for this particular body, I think something around seven in X and Y worked pretty well, more or less. And what you can also always do is move the mesh uh, uh, the, uh, the, the lettuce structure. So seven looks kind of like all the knots of the beams are on the outer surfaces. So once you're satisfied with your result, just hit okay. And what's important now is, um, to export that for printing, um, when you can print it directly in fusion. But if you have an external software and you need to export it to be in step or STL files, you can only export this as a mesh, uh, so STL file. And to do so, you first have to transform it into a mesh. Um, and you right click on the body, go to the volumetric mesh uh, interactions, and there you can generate a mesh. And what I like to do typically is generate a high resolution mesh and then reduce the mesh size afterwards because this typically gives you the best results, but it also takes a little bit of time. All right, so now we have the mesh and as you can see, it is 
super fine tessellated, which probably would generate like a three or four hundred megabyte STL out of this, and makes it you know not very feasible for use in third-party software. So what you can do is reduce the mesh, and that's the reduce mesh button. You click on the mesh, and what I found is that ten percent typically is more than enough, and this also takes forever. All right, so the mesh reduction is complete, and it already feels much better to rotate everything. And it still looks quite okay. Uh, probably could do some more reduction, but the beams still look good. So now, since you get the mesh, you can export that as a mesh in SDL, and you're done.